This video was brought to you by my website, airparts.com, high quality, genuine parts. Remember when I said you'll be seeing more of this car? Yep, there's more of this car. Today, we're going to be replacing the rear shocks in this 2015 Mazda 3. The reason why we're replacing the rear shocks is because the right rear shock was leaking. And I'm going to show you where it was leaking. The right rear is leaking. It may not seem apparent. But take a look at this bushing right here. Now take a look at the comparison picture of the right and the left rear shock. The right rear has this stuff that's kind of caked up and gunked up around the bottom of it. And you can also see that the rubber bushing has been swollen compared to the left side. Unlike oil seals, these type of suspension bushings are not designed to come into contact with oil. And when they do, the rubber tends to swell up and soften up, which was an obvious sign of a rear shock failure on the right rear. Now, as you can see from this footage, I'm jacking the rear of the vehicle up and I'm showing you the support point. I'm going to jack it up and support it with some jack stands. I'm using six ton Daytona jack stands, which are frankly put overkill, but that's all I have and that's what I'm going to be using. Now, I really want to emphasize that this is not a necessary step. I'm only doing this to loosen up the top nut on the strut mount. I'm going to pull this trim back in the trunk so I can loosen up that nut. It makes it a little easier to remove, but it's not always entirely necessary. For me, it's always made it a little bit easier to continue to loosen the nut once the shock is out of the car. Now in this video, I have a guide on the top so you can see exactly which side I'm working on because it might get a little bit confusing. Unfortunately, I did not get great footage of removing just one side. I got a little bit of great footage on one side and a little bit of great footage on the other side to complete it. Left and right side are exactly the same when you replace the rears. It's just mirrored. So just pay attention to the top of the video as it switches back and forth. Now that's a 19 millimeter nut for the bottom of the shock. That's a 17 millimeter bolt for the lower control arm. And this is one more 17 millimeter bolt that needs to come off. That's it on the bottom. These will all come off and then you can swing that bad boy loose and kind of move it around and get it to how you want to, to get that shock out. There are two more bolts up top and I'll show you just a moment right now. We're now on the right side and these are the two 14 millimeter nuts for the shock strut mount that need to be removed. Once you remove those two, the whole thing is going to be freed up and you can get it out. Now as far as the lower 19mm nut on the strut, here's a socket and wobbler and extension combo that you can use to take it off. This can work if you have a lot of rust and you're struggling with it. I didn't have to do that, I was lucky and I was able to just remove it with my 19mm wrench. Now once I have that lower 19 millimeter nut removed, I'm going to go ahead and remove the 14 millimeter bolts for the upper shock strut mount so I can go ahead and remove that shock. Now once it's all loosened up, this is what we have. Keep in mind this is a California car with no rust except on this bolt. So if you have a rust belt car, you're probably going to fight with this a little bit. I'm just going to give you a quick heads up and be honest with you about this. Gonna hammer this and give it a few whacks to get this shock loose. It comes right off for me after several whacks. I'm not gonna do the YouTube thing where everybody's like, yeah, it just comes off with like one hit and just falls off right into your lap and changes itself and you're all good to go after like 1.5 business seconds. So for those that want to unsubscribe because the video was not up to par because I didn't show you everything, remember, like Rich Rebuild said, this isn't an airport. Don't need to announce your departure in the comment section. Now I'm going to be reusing the shock strut mount because it's in very good condition still. So I'm going to remove that 12 millimeter nut. This was the one that I loosened while the shock was still in the car. I still had to end up holding it with my vice grips and loosening it up with my 12 millimeter offset wrench anyways. General rule of thumb, you shouldn't be able to easily push your shock with your pinky. That's bad. 
I guess that would also be considered general rule of pinky, but anyways, you can see why we replaced that shock. Very obvious, no bueno, so let's get this new shock right on. Now I'm going to put the strut mount back on to the new shock and I'm going to start tightening this up. It's the same process, I'm going to hold it with the vice grips as I did when I removed the nut and tighten it up with my offset wrench. Once you have it all assembled, now it's time to put it back together. I'm going to put the 14mm nuts up top on first. And then I'm going to put the bottom together. I'm going to slide this in, and this is when you're going to have to kind of wiggle the assembly together. You have to move the hub and get the shock on. You have to kind of push it a little bit. You'll see how I'm doing it. You're just going to have to mess with it a little bit until you get it on. Now once you have it on, you're going to start putting it all back together. You're really going to want to use a jack or some sort of support to get that control arm up while you push those bolts through. Can you do it without a jack or a support? Yes. Do you want to do it without a jack or support? No. Now when you're getting those suspension bolts in, you can give them a few whacks with a hammer to get them in. And once they're in, I further drive them all the way in with my impact, but I just tap on the trigger just in case it's not threaded on properly so I don't cross thread it. And now the only thing left to do after getting them all on is to torque them down and take it for a test drive. If this video helped you out, make sure to hit like. If you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. And don't forget, if you're looking for high quality, right. genuine parts, make sure to check out AeroParts.com.